Anna. Welcome back to the Dynamite Explorers program. We are on week nine. So last time we learned all about one of the most famous armored dinosaurs of the dinosaur times and the living tank of the dinosaur world. We learned about the Anglosaurus. Um, so if you missed it, make sure you go back and find it and you can check out our YouTube channel. So this week we are going to learn about a prehistoric reptile, um, flying reptile. Um, who actually had the largest skull of all the pterosaurs, Thalassodromius. So when and where did Thalassodromius live? Well, Thalassodromius lived approximately 100 million years ago during the Albion age of the Lower Cretaceous period. And they lived in the area that we know today to be Northeastern Brazil on the continent of South America. So remember, we've got this big chart here, and we are talking about this time right that the arrow is pointing at, the Albion Age. So it's right at the end of the Lower Cretaceous Period, right before the start of the Upper Cretaceous Period. So this is the time period that we are talking about. And you can see here, you've got the map on the left that shows um, what the world looked like during the Cretaceous Period. And this is what South America looks like on the right presently. Um, so you can see here where the arrows are pointing on the left, the continent of South America is actually pretty well formed at this point. Um, and there's just some shifting that needs to happen and some more details that are going to be kind of like pounded out to form the full continent. Um, but you can see here on the right that it actually looks pretty similar to what it looks like on the left. Um, and you've got the star here. This is the area of the continent of South America that we're actually talking about. So how did the Lacedromius get its name? Well, their name comes from a combination of Greek words thalassa, which means sea, and dromius, which means runner. So their name together means sea runner. And they actually have an, a more specific species name, um, which is thalassodromius cephi, and it refers to the shape of the crest on top of their head. So we're, the crest on top of their head is this part right here. That's what we're talking about. Um, and they were given this name because scientists thought that originally they had a really similar shape to the Egyptian god Seth's crown. So you have here on the left, the Egyptian god Seth, and on the right, you have the Lacedromius. And you can see they do look a little similar in terms of their head shape, which is why they were given that name. So when was the Lacedromius discovered? Well, the Lacedromius was discovered in the year 1983, so 38 years ago, just about 40 years ago, in the Ararite Basin of northeastern Brazil. Um, and the first skull of the Lacedromius was actually collected over a long period of time in several pieces. So that means that scientists discovered it and they actually had to take it out piece by piece. They couldn't take it out all at one time. What did the Lacedromius look like? Well, the Lacedromius was actually small compared to some of their pterosaur relatives. So if you guys remember back when we talked about the other flying reptiles, we talked about them being part of this group called pterosaurs. So they're actually not dinosaurs, they're relatives of the dinosaurs, um, kind of like cousins, but they are in their own separate category, they're flying reptiles. Um, but of all of the pterosaurs that scientists know about, Thalassodromius actually had the biggest skull of all of them. Um, and the skull was actually about 4.8 feet long, so it was just under five feet long, which was a really massive skull. And the Lacedromius had this really large skull, but in their skull, you can see right here, they had this really large beak and they had really large jaws. Um, and their jaws were actually toothless, so they didn't have any teeth at all. However, um, even though their jaws were toothless, they were still really dangerous because their upper and lower jaw edges were actually really sharp and blade-like. So they kind of had a jaw that was like a knife or a sword. It was really sharp and pointy um, and it was still really dangerous. So the Lacedromius was really short um, and would likely have only been around six feet tall. So even though um, they had a wingspan that was like 14 to 15 feet long, which is really, really long and tall, they were actually still pretty short. So they were still only about the same height as like a lot of humans. And the Lacedromius would actually have still been really lightweight um, because all pterosaurs had hollow bones, just like birds do today. Um, so much like the Quetzalcoatl Atlas that we learned about in week three, the Lacedromius would have been really lightweight. So if we're gonna compare, if the Lacedromius was about one tenth of the size of Quetzalcoatlus, 
they would have only weighed around 50 pounds. So if you compare that to the average human who is six feet tall, the average human who is six feet tall weighs around 175 pounds. So the average human who's the same size as the Lacedromius would have been three times the weight, which is much, much larger. So what did the Lacedromius eat? Well, the Lacedromius was originally thought to have fed like a modern skimmer bird, like a pelican. Now a skimmer bird is um, a unique kind of like feeding style where birds actually fly over the water and then they dip down, they catch prey in their jaws and then they fly off. Um, and scientists believed that the Lacedromius would eat prey by doing just that. So they would fly over the water surface, they would dip the lower part of their jaw down into the top of the water to catch their prey. Um, but this idea was later criticized because they didn't think that there was enough evidence to actually prove that. So since that initial discovery, scientists have found that the Lacedromius actually had really strong neck muscles. Um, which might have allowed them to kill and eat prey on the ground, like lizards. Um, so this would have made the Lacedromius a piscivore, meaning that they ate primarily fish, or it could have made them a carnivore, meaning that they ate other kinds of meat. So what are some fun facts about the Lacedromius? Well, not only was the skull of the Lacedromius the largest of all pterosaurs, but the crest at the top of their skull is the largest of all pterosaurs and any known vertebrate. So a vertebrate is an animal with a spine, right? And so they have the largest crest of any known animal with a spine, which is pretty amazing. Um, and part of the reason that their head looks so big is because the crest on top of their skull was actually three times larger than the rest of their skull. So you can see right here, this is a fossil of the Lacedromius, and you can see their skull here. Now imagine this crest on top of their head was actually three times larger. So the crest actually probably would have been just huge on top of the end of their skull. And their crest actually could have had several different uses, which is really interesting. So it could have helped them regulate their body temperature um, because there actually could have been blood vessels inside of there and it could have actually helped pump blood throughout their body to um, cool them down if they were too hot or to like help them stay warm if they were too cold. Um, it also could have been used for like aerodynamics um, so it could have helped them with their flying potentially or it could have just been as simple as distinguishing between males and females. So the different colors, the different sizes could have really helped identify like which was a male and which was a female. And the Lacedromius is also compared to the toucan, the modern looking toucan, um, because their bills are really similar. So you have the Lacedromius here on the left, you've got the toucan here on the right. And the really interesting thing is that their crest function the same way that a toucan's bill does. So toucans actually use their bills to stay cool and to warm themselves up in case they need it because they have blood vessels that actually go all the way throughout their beak, just in the same way that the Lacedromius did in their crest. So not only do they look kind of similar, but they functioned in a very similar way. So they're often compared because they're really similar. So that is all for this week and that's all for the Lacedromius. And since we're finished with this pterosaur and this flying reptile, we're gonna put them on the map. Um, and as a reminder, each week we're going to add the next dinosaur or flying reptile that we talk about, or underwater reptile, as in the case of the Mosasaurus, not necessarily flying. Um, and then at the end, we'll have all the dinosaurs on the map to show where they would have lived. So you can see right here in South America, on this dark green continent, that is where we have the Lacedromius. So tune in next time when we explore a new dinosaur, one of the largest plant-eating dinosaurs and the long neck of the dinosaur world. So we're going to talk about the Brachiosaurus. All right, we'll see you guys next time.